So far we have seen block breaks with a single breaking shoe and now we are going to look at another block break with two breaking shoes and they will be brought into engagement simultaneously from two sides of this rotating brake drum uh, using this linkage. The linkage consists of say this lever pivoted about a fixed pivot. Connected to that is a, a tie rod which is connected to this L-shaped lever, the bell crank lever and at this corner it is attached to this lever carrying the second shoe. Both the brake shoes are attached to the levers via a pin and there is an advantage of doing that it makes the analysis easier as we will see next. But first let us see how this brake uh, engages and disengages. So let us move this lever up. So this is how the brake disengages and if you bring the lever down uh, by applying some effort at this end it can be engaged. Next we are going to see how much of effort yields uh, you know how much of the braking torque. So we are going to do the force analysis next. Let us start by drawing the free body diagrams of the four links here and they are labeled as before link number two, three, four and five and we are going to consider forces coming from one link onto the other and neglect all the weights because weight is insignificant compared to these forces. So these forces are basically coming from one link onto the other. For example, this force comes from link 2 on link 3, while this force comes from link 3 on link 2. So here is a action-reaction pair. And there are several of those. There is one more here and one more here and so on. So all these forces are known in their point of application. And that is where the links meet each other. Now let us take stock of what else we know about these forces. Well, there are three categories, forces which are completely known, forces which are known only in their line of action and forces which are completely unknown. So let us start with a link which is simplest of them all from force, force analysis point of view and that is this link. Because it is acted upon by only two forces, so they will have to act along the link itself and therefore we know the line of action of forces at these two ends. Now since these are action-reaction pairs, we can use the same line of action to indicate the line of action of its reaction. Similarly, I am going to show the line of action of this force F34 by this line. Next I am going to draw a force which is completely known and in this case it is going to be the effort that we will apply at this end. And lastly, the third force on this bell crank lever is going to be a completely unknown force. So you can see this bell crank lever is acted upon by three forces and for equilibrium you have to meet two conditions. Number one, the three forces must add up to zero and number two, they also must meet in a point. They must be concurrent because if they are not so, they may add up to zero but yet they can form a couple and the link won't be in equilibrium. Uh, so I'm going to extend the line of action of uh, this force and uh, I'm extend this till it intersects the other line of action. So these two forces are meeting in this point. So the third force acting at this point must pass through this point. Otherwise the force system won't be concurrent. So this way we find the uh, lines of action of all the three forces. Next, I'm going to copy this line of action at the head of this uh, known force and the other line of action at the tail of our known force and that completes a force polygon. So this force polygon uh, is going to be cyclic in order. So when I draw the forces, uh, let's zoom in here. So when I draw the forces, they will be directed like this and the third force will be directed like this. So now all the three forces on, uh, on the bell crank lever are known. You can get rid of these lines of action and we can show the forces. So I'll move this force at its point of application and this force at its point of application. Next, I'm going to draw a force which is equal and opposite uh, to this force over here and a force which is equal and opposite to that force over there. And I'm going to move those forces because those are actually the reactions on the other link. So this is the reaction on this link. Okay. Now a force equal and opposite to this will be acting at this end. So that's going to be identical to this force. So let's copy that. 
and uh, equal and opposite to this force will be acting here which is nothing but this force okay so we have these many known forces now now let us come to the forces acting on these uh, friction pads the brake shoes and the brake shoes are attached to the lever via a pin now whatever may be the normal reaction coming from the brake drum and whatever is the uh, frictional force uh, coming on the shoe the resultant of those two must pass through the pin because if it doesn't then it is going to swivel the shoe and the shoe will assume an equilibrium position so that the resultant of normal reaction and frictional force passes through the pin ultimately so we are going to show uh, not the magnitudes but the relative magnitudes of the normal reaction and the uh, and the frictional force so the resultant of these two uh, can be plotted so it is going to be uh, like this over here and it is going to be like this over here uh, those of you who are familiar with the concept of angle of friction uh, then this is inclined at the angle of friction this line of action so now we know two lines of action on this link two lines of action of forces on this link so we can extend them so they meet so the third force here must pass through this point and the third force here must pass through that point uh, then these lines of action uh, can be transferred can be copied to uh, this these ends to complete the force polygon so like this they can be extended while till they meet so we can trim them here and the force polygon can be completed and it is cyclic in sense so the third one will be like this then we can draw this and this and finally we can transfer these forces to their respective points of application so this goes here and this goes here uh, so all the forces are now completely known ultimately the only two forces we need uh, in this case to get the frictional torque are here the two frictional forces at the shoes so multiplying these two forces by the radius of the braking drum will give us the braking torque 